A coolant leak from a Russian space capsule attached to the International Space Station was likely caused by a micrometeorite strike. Two Russian cosmonauts were about to venture outside the station on a planned spacewalk when ground specialists saw a stream of fluid and particles on a live video feed from space, along with a pressure drop on instruments. I spoke to Brad Tucker, astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU a short time ago. Brad, thank you so much for joining us. Looking very festive, uh, I might uh, <laughs> add today, getting into the Christmas spirit. Look, this is an interesting one. How dangerous of a situation could this have been? Look, yeah, it, it was kind of a surprise because it was discovered by ground crews when the Russians were going out for a spacewalk. They realized there was a stream, essentially, of particles and debris and fluid essentially coming out from it. Now, so far, luckily, no one was in it, so that's all fine. But the way this, the capsules work is once the capsule is docked, it acts as the ride home. And importantly, it acts as what we call a lifeboat, or essentially, if something were to go wrong and the astronauts would have to evacuate, they can actually get out of the space station and evacuate down to Earth. Now, the problem is um, some independent assessments say that, in fact, based on how much fluid uh, and coolant was lost, that it may indeed not be usable. And if that's the case, there are three potential stranded astronauts or cosmonauts up there. So it's definitely a situation that needs to um, be further studied and analyzed, so to speak, but also figure out exactly what the full ramifications of this are. So what happens now then, especially with those that have been essentially left behind? Yeah, so there's a few different options. They can send another capsule up there. Now, that is this definitely possible. Uh, that really hasn't been the case that they've needed to do that, but that is a possibility. Um, and that can either come from the Soyuz uh, side, the Russian side, or it could come from a group like SpaceX, potentially. Um, so they're going to have to weigh out the few options. Ultimately, it will be Russia will have to do a number of evaluations um, and testing to see is it potentially salvageable, can it come down, or has it been damaged too much, and then make that assessment from there. But if that's the case, this would be quite a unique situation, needing to send up a capsule just to get them down. Because even though there will be another rotation of cosmonauts who go in and replace them, their capsule they go up will be their ride back down. So they can't just wait for that next capsule to come down. They will need something to be set up. Now, they do have a few months uh, left on their mission, so they're in no rush in terms of needing to get down. But it is the risk that if something were to go wrong, they would not have a way off the space station. No, a very precarious situation, that's for sure. Now, let's move on. A NASA-led international satellite mission is going to be conducting a survey of the world's oceans, lakes and rivers. This is for the first time, so what do they hope to find out? Yeah, using some very sensitive new techniques in, in, in radar and radar telemetry, they're going to be mapping the levels of waterways all across the Earth. So it's not just the oceans. It's looking at rivers and creeks and lakes and everything like that. And they're specifically going to be looking at things like where heat change is happening. So looking at where levels of carbon dioxide are being more absorbed or not, where heat is changing more rapidly than other parts. And that's because when you get different currents, that actually creates different values in amounts of energy loss or heat loss. And so because of the now uh, improvement in technology, they can look at these details that we've never been able to see before. So it's going to be a remarkable step in understanding exactly in real time what is happening to our waterways all over Earth, what this means for um, weather predictions, the climate, and that sort of thing. It'll be very interesting to see the results of that survey. Now, two mm. space companies are hoping to launch a rocket next week and possibly good news for Australia. That's right. So this is a, a combination between essentially Australian partners. So AT Space, which is a, uh, a private company in Australia building rockets. Now they're partners with Thai Space, a Taiwanese company, their sister companies. They're hoping to achieve their first suborbital or rocket launch uh, and happening from Australia. So as a South Australian company, they're aiming to launch from Australia and they're working with Southern Launch, uh, which is a group set up um, in South Australia and they have two facilities at Whaler's Way uh, and the Canuba Test Range. And so this Whaler's Way launch, they're hoping. And this is quite exciting because they're also taking on board a payload built by an Australian company. So you have an Australian company working on the satellite payload, working with the Australian rocket company and the Australian 
um, a spaceport, essentially, commercial spaceport. So if they can get this off, it would be a remarkable big step for uh, Australian industry and the Australian space group. You know, it wasn't that long ago that we were just celebrating this first rocket launch back at um, Equatorial Launch Australia in Northern Territory back in June and July with NASA. And now we may have another one already less than six months later. Such great strides for the Australian space industry and all that, uh, all who are involved. So really, really good to hear. Now, this is interesting because we saw that big Tonga volcano eruption earlier this year, but now we actually know just how powerful that eruption was. Yeah, look, obviously that was one of the big stories of the year and it, it was measured, the shockwave was felt to Alaska. It was measured to be about 60 megatons worth of energy, that's 60 million tons of TNT, more than a nuclear bomb. But really just putting this now into scale, satellite data has shown that when that volcano erupted, so much energy came out of it that the water above, again, this was an underwater volcano, actually shot water into space. There was so much energy that it actually exited the atmosphere. Now, this takes an enormous amount of force to actually do this, not just reach space, which is kind of determined around 100 kilometers, but the physical realms where it can start to escape Earth's atmosphere and orbit. So this really just goes to show the intensity and power of the volcano. And to be honest, luckily, that given how fierce that was, there wasn't more damage there. Yeah, very, very lucky. Is it common for this sort of event to happen where water actually blasts into the air, or is this a rare event? Yeah, look, I mean, we do get underwater volcanoes and that water goes up. I think this is the first time that we've actually been able to measure that it's actually left Earth. Uh, usually it does go up and, and then obviously falls back down, but there was so much power for this one. This it does appear to be the first measurement, both based on using the satellite data and ground-based sensors that says, Yes, there was water that actually exited the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, extraordinary stuff. Brad Tucker, we need to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks.